Hey everybody, I'm Wilder Weir and welcome to Sportsnet Central Montreal. Now we start today's show with, of course, a hockey legend. The sport has lost its great ambassador. John Beliveau has died at the age of 83. He was a hero to generations of hockey fans in the face of the Montreal Canadiens. Beliveau won 10 Stanley Cups as a player and seven more as an executive with the team. He was tied for the longest serving captain of the Canadiens with 10 seasons. He was also one of the first players to score 500 goals and the first hockey player to ever appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated. But above all, Beliveau was a kind and caring man who lifted everything he did in life to a new level. And with a look back at the man and his career, here is our Stephen Brunt. He sailed above it all. Not a giant, really, though it certainly seemed that way. And if the rocket provided the fire that burned within the beating heart of Le Canadien, then Jean Beliveau was the cool center, the cerebral cortex, the captain of the ship. Uh, I started in Victoriaville as a junior. I remember I practiced lots of puck, you know. Uh, I shoot, I shoot, and maybe that's helped me. A working class kid from Victoriaville with a grade 10 education, one of eight siblings, that was the norm in Quebec back then. He didn't play organized hockey until he was 12 years old. Instead, he skated on the backyard rink his dad made every winter, played shinny with the local kids. And the truth is, baseball was just as much his game. Maybe in a different time, he could have made it there. Could have played alongside his hero, Ted Williams. When they saw Beliveau for the first time, hockey people knew right away that he was special. He was the first true next one, whose arrival was anticipated long before he got to the NHL. He played junior in Quebec City, became the undisputed star of La Vieille Capitale, became Le Gros Bill, a local legend. And then, the Canadians came courting. In those days, every Quebec-born player was theirs by divine right. They were desperate. They hadn't won the cup since 46. And here was the greatest young hockey talent in the world, right on their doorstep. Beliveau listened to the Canadians, but then he said no. A remarkable act of rebellion in those days. A bold declaration of independence in an era before player agents or unions. Instead, he stayed to play two years of senior hockey with the Aces. He owed the folks from Quebec that, he said, and loyalty, his father taught him, meant more than anything. But he also made more money than just about anyone in the NHL. They built a brand new arena, La Colisee. Beliveau, l'un des plus grands joueurs de hockey. Soon enough, it was known as Chateau Beliveau, just like the house that Ruth built. John, you are one of the most sought-after player in the game of hockey. Since I was young, uh, I listened to the hockey game Saturday, uh, Saturday night, and I never thought one day I can play for this team. History has just been made. When Beliveau finally signed with the Canadians in 1953, after the Habs bought the league in which he played to make it happen, it was a deal that paid him more than Gordie Howe was making, more than Richard. It was a monumental event in Quebec and in the history of hockey. Beliveau was not the fastest, not the strongest. Stripped down, you could barely see a muscle. But cruising down the ice, always in control, seeing the whole rink, delivering a perfect pass, deking a goalie effortlessly. He was the master of his art and never a hair out of place. Through two great dynasties, through 18 seasons, through 10 Stanley Cups, the last secured in the final game he played. The small town kid was transformed in the big city. 
He took an off-season job with Molson's and began moving up the corporate ladder. His halting English improved. It's the dream to any young boys in Provence, Quebec, to wear the blue, red, and white uniform. In a suit and tie, he cut nearly as impressive a figure as he did on the ice. The French have a word for it, debonair. As political and cultural currents buffeted the province, the Richard riot, the quiet revolution, the rise of the sovereignists, the FLQ, Beliveau again rode above the waves. Richard and his angry black eyes became a nationalist beacon. But Beliveau, proudly Quebecois, pledged his fidelity to Canada and largely stayed out of the debate. No surprise that they asked him twice if he'd like to be Governor General. No surprise that he turned them down. His priorities after hockey were a daughter who had been left without a husband, two granddaughters left without a father. He stepped back from the brewery, back from an executive job with the Habs, from all of those corporate boards, for family. The images that remain behind are indelible. For those old enough to remember him in uniform, the towering number four, the captain at the center of it all. And after, the working class kid turned hockey statesman, who said the right things and looked the part like a prince, like a king, our royalty.